This video is installation support to be used in conjunction with written instructions found in our kit. We hope that it will guide you through your installation. If after viewing this video you find that you are not confident in your mechanical abilities, we do not have the necessary tools, please seek a professional installer. This is how your new kit should look, boxed and sealed. Be sure to check the part number on the label to be certain that it's the correct kit for your application. Remove the staples with needle nose pliers. You can save the box for your stock parts storage. When removing the packaging material, be certain that no parts are discarded. Inside you'll find sealed bags of parts and hardware, gaskets, and your linkage support brackets, crossbar, air cleaners, manifolds, and of course the carburetors. You will need a good service manual for instruction removing all stock components as well as torque specs for installing your new kit. Our instructions are based on an engine in stock condition. If you've made other modifications, some steps may not apply and some steps may need to be added. A fuel pressure regulator is required to control the fuel pressure from either a mechanical or an electrical fuel pump. One and a half to three pounds maximum pressure at the carburetor is required. More than three pounds of pressure will overpower the needle and seat, causing a myriad of problems. This video shows the installation on a dual port type 1 engine. The basic installation is the same for single port type 1 and type 2 engines. The manifolds will of course be different. These applications require the installation of a balance tube which is also used for vacuum requirements such as power brakes. Install a fitting in each manifold. Install the tubing behind the fan housing connecting to the two manifolds. If vacuum is required, tee in the center of the tube, not from one of the ends. Fittings and hose are supplied in these kits. Always remember, your worst enemy with any intake installation is a vacuum leak. Be certain to install properly and check for vacuum leaks before adjusting your carburetors. Our kit includes exhaust preheater flange block offs and gaskets and a coil relocation bracket if your current coil location interferes with your new linkage. Lay everything out on a clean work surface, separate and count all the hardware pieces so that you are confident that everything is there and within easy reach. Read and study the instructions before beginning installation. If you have any questions or doubt your ability, now is the time to take your car and the kit to a professional. Install the linkage arms on the carburetors. Remove the shaft nut and lock washer and install the new linkage arms from your kit. They should face up and to the left on the carburetor. Replace the lock washer and nut and tighten securely, but do not over tighten. Check the spacers to be certain they are in their correct location. Narrow spacer inside, wide spacer outside. This provides clearance for the linkage extension lock nuts. Then remove the return spring from its upper mount. Remove the spring retainer bracket and screw. If you are not using a vacuum advanced distributor, be sure to install the plugs provided on the vacuum tubes on the carburetors. Install the hex rod bushings into the linkage upright brackets. Push them in by hand 
then tap lightly with a mallet until seated. Now apply the grease provided with your kit into the bushing. Just a small amount will do. Install the linkage support brackets to the carburetor with the bolts and spring washers provided. They are left and right brackets with the bushing facing inward to support the hex rod. Tighten the bolts being certain not to over torque, then reattach the return spring to the hole in the bracket. Once complete, bend the lock tab on the washer to hold the shaft nut from loosening. Locate the two linkage extensions, one long, one short. The short extension is used on the passenger side carburetor. Be careful when tightening. Do not over torque or you will break the small 10 30 second stud. Now assemble the two down rods using right threaded and left threaded heim joints and nuts. This allows for easy adjustment. The heads are marked L and R and the right hand nuts are silver and the left hand nuts are gold. Leave the nuts loose for now. Install the studs to the intake manifolds. Run them in until you just feel them coming through the other side. You may choose to use a small dab of blue Loctite to secure the studs. This sealing surface is critical to engine operation. Make certain that the cylinder head surface is clean and straight, that the gasket fits flush on the head, and that the cylinder tin does not interfere. No gasket sealer is needed. Now bolt the intake manifolds to the cylinder heads using the nuts and spring washers supplied. The kit used in this video does not incorporate a crossover tube so the manifolds are universal, left or right side. If your application requires a crossover tube, you want to mount the manifolds with the fittings facing back toward the flywheel so that your crossover tube will run behind the fan housing. Snug the manifold nuts on the passenger side, but leave the driver's side nuts just hand tight. Now install the carburetor base gasket. Install the carburetor, making certain that the base gasket is centered on the carburetor butterfly. Use the nuts and spring washers provided in the kit. Your engine is probably in your car, so installation will not be as simple as it looks here. Take your time and make certain to follow each instruction. Don't over tighten the hold down nuts, 12 to 14 pounds max. Now let's assemble the linkage crossbar. 
Install the jam nuts onto the ball ends. Then thread one ball end onto the end of the linkage hex bar. Install the left extension arm, the center pull lever, then the right extension arm onto the hex bar. Install the allen screws to each, but do not tighten at this time. There should be approximately 60 degrees between the center line of the arms compared to the center pull lever. And of course both extension arms should be on the same plane. Then thread the other ball end onto the hex bar. Install the centering springs into the bracket bushings. Now take the hex bar assembly and install the passenger side ball end into the bushing. Move the driver's side carburetor and manifold out slightly and engage the ball and bushing while holding tighten the manifold nuts. Adjust the hex crossbar so that it snugs into the bushing. The spring will hold tension, so the bar should be adjusted so that the ball end fits into the bushing but remains loose enough for smooth operation. Loosen the jam nuts and adjust the ball ends by rotating them in or out to accommodate a snug fit with smooth operation. Once you've found the sweet spot, tighten the jam nuts against the hex bar. Now check the position of the center pull lever making certain that it is in line with your throttle cable. Then tighten the Allen bolt. Install the down rods to the linkage extension on the carburetors. and the linkage brackets on the hex bar. Slide the hex bar linkage arms until the down rods align with the linkage extension on the carburetors. Then tighten the Allen screw. Adjust the length of the down rods to accommodate full closed and full open throttle. Check to make certain that you have full throttle and that the butterfly is completely closed when the linkage is released. Then tighten the down rod nuts. Again, not too much torque. Slip the clamp over the air cleaner base. Then slide the air cleaner and clamp onto the neck of the carburetor and tighten the clamp. Proper pre-adjustment of the carburetor is essential. The speed screw is located at the throttle shaft linkage. Turn the screw out until it does not touch the linkage arm. Then turn until it just touches. Then turn one and a half turns, but no more. This is critical, as if it is more than one and a half turns in, the carburetor will not adjust. The mixture screw is located on the lower side of the carburetor. Turn the mixture screw in until it is gently seated. Then turn out two turns.
Once you are certain that everything is ready, reattach your battery cable and crank your engine. Check for fuel or vacuum leaks. Providing all is well, you are ready to adjust your carburetors. Now turn your engine off. Disconnect your linkage down rods from your carburetors. The carburetors need to be totally independent for proper adjustment. Now start your engine. With the speed screw turned at one and a half turn, your engine will be running at a low RPM. That's okay, as you need it to just run, not at a higher or normal idle speed. Start with the passenger side carburetor and adjust the mixture screw by slowly turning it in one half turn at a time until the engine starts to fall off or stumble and die. Turn the mixture screw out slowly until, by ear, you hear the best idle. If you continue to turn the mixture screw out and it does not improve, turn it back until you are right at the point where it ran the best. You want to be right at that cusp of your best idle. Then repeat this procedure on the other carburetor. Once you have achieved what you hear and feel to be your best idle, set your idle speed by adjusting the speed screws. Using your synchronizing tool, sync the two carburetors by adjusting the speed screws if necessary. Now adjust your down rods and reattach them to the carburetors, then tighten the adjusting nuts. Then double check that they are still in sync with your synchronizer tool. As with any carburetor setup, additional jetting may be required to tune to your specific engine combination and altitude. 